on The Simpsons, I might mm-hmm. suggest that we go through it. Because there's actually probably a good 15 years of The Simpsons that I have mm-hmm. seen none of. <laughs> you know, as, my, as as game as I am for that, I'm not sure we need two more white guys talking about The Simpsons. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I get I'm, that. I'm for it. I'm for it. I, I get that. No. no. That's true. I talk about it enough so. on my own. I'm like my own walking Simpsons podcast. I don't mean to insult the idea. I don't mean to bring you down, Jared. <laughs> no, but I mean we've got we've got plenty of good place to get through. Yeah, and you know, um, so we'll do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not crushing my dreams of having a Simpsons podcast. Um, That's okay. Did you want one to do one anyway? I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't. I I would be, I will be happy if I, the the problem is at this point podcast ideas that I come up with I need to get other people to host them because I don't want to host any more podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick of my own voice at this point. Not not that you dear listeners could ever be sick of my mellifluous voice <laughs> and spot on impersonations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but as we continue with attempt number three, Mr. Shellstrop, our dad. Cool. I'm Chris Baker. I'm your soulmate. Bring it in, man. <laughs> Sorry, um, I must ask, why are you wearing a sash that says "best person" on it? Apparently, I am the number one points getter in the entire neighborhood. <laughs> So, I always have to have my sashes custom made due to my height and bosom size. <laughs> also, apparently, sashes are out this season. The diagonal line really draws one's eye to the chin bloat. <laughs> Go fork yourself, you mean giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, mean giraffes, yes, yes. which, to be... I. That's one of the more adorable tortures. <laughs> uh, but they did bring back the blue and yellow suits mm-hmm. everybody's wearing, except um, which, which you know that she's wearing the Michigan Law shirt again. Yes, yes. So <laughs> maize and blue would be the colors of Michigan, which is the alma mater of one Tom Brady. I did not watch the Super Bowl. I, I, you know, I, I was hesitant to even bring it up. However, I have a problem with the New England Patriots. <laughs> As does America, apparently. <laughs> I'm it's the okay. only. I'm not I am the, you and Matt Myra, I think. <laughs> me, Matt Myra, and most of Massachusetts. And Giselle Bunchen. <laughs> yeah. Maybe but she doesn't either. I don't, I don't think she. Maybe she does because. I mean, Tom dedicates a lot of time on the field, as was demonstrated last night in the most boring game <laughs> on the face of the planet. <laughs> I heard it was not good. Oh, it was awful. By even, it was just awful. As even at the end, I did not even feel good about winning that game. Yeah, I was trying to think of the last time that I actually watched a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, it, um, I remember you were um, an, uh, upset about um, that Harrison Ford shilling for Alexa. Uh, Alexa, yes. And let me tell you, your fears were founded. It was not a good ad. No, no. Well, no. but since I have Forrest Whitaker, the uh, the astronaut brother people, yeah, um, the Kellys, yeah, yeah. that's them. I think I've met I've met Scott in Tucson once. Okay. The one who's not the one who did it for a year. Gotcha. Yeah, I've met them. I met him once. Um, but yeah, I. Why? So what? It, what it was there some big reveal as to what they're all? So apparently they are trying to put Alexa in more devices, but there were some things that did not work so well. So in Harrison Ford's case. Mm-hmm. They put Alexa in a dog collar, and the dog was ordering dog food. <laughs> so, and he was not—he was not too happy. He was—he was grumpy, Harrison Ford. So, so, but they didn't—they didn't, they didn't uh, uh, hide any of their mistakes. They actually like made it real world, kind of like so that we put Alexa in this, and this is what happened. 
Yeah, but like in the most goofy, outrageous way. So in Forrest Wicker's case, he asks Alexa to play a podcast and Alexa's in his toothbrush. <laughs> so he plays a podcast and of course he can't hear it because he's brushing his teeth. <laughs> It has to be seen to be believed. It, it wasn't that good. Um, uh, that's that's fun. I heard there were there was a lack of good Super Bowl ads as well. The best one was the Andy Warhol ad. I don't know mm. if you've seen it. With that, look up no, that look that one it. up. Okay. Um, pretty much it's forty five seconds of Andy Warhol eating a Whopper. Gotcha. It was like found footage from a documentary. Oh, that's cool. That they gave to Burger King, and apparently it was actually supposed to be a McDonald's. Uh, it was supposed to be a Big Mac, but. <laughs> they brought a whopper by mistake. <laughs> when you read yeah, McDonald's. <laughs> when you like when you see the ad and then there's a lot of stories that came out that night mm. about it. You can find out like it went um it went pre like, it wasn't it it just it was a, a very serendipitous how it all happened for Burger King. Oh, okay. But and it was very, it was pretty much the antithesis of every other ad that was played that night because it was quiet. Mm. Not to mention the way the man eats a Whopper is just weirdly bizarre because um, he puts the ketchup on the side and he dips the burger <laughs> in the ketchup. That's not that weird. I've, I, I Back in my burger eating days, I have done that. Well, as someone who hates ketchup pretty much as much as he hates mochi. Really? How do you... I, how do you hate ketchup? It's just tomato and like some what vinegar and sugar and I don't. I, again, I, it's one of those things that like I don't hate hate. It's just something that if I are you anti condiment, I just would prefer not to have so many condiments and um I don't need to dress up. I don't need to dress things up. I see. Okay, so, it's like hmm. French fries. I just like. It's like French fries. I don't need ketchup on my French fries. The salt and the potatoes are going to kill me just fine. Interesting. And um, whenever on the when I get McNuggets or chicken anything, mm-hmm. um, bringing that back to chicken nuggets, <laughs> <laughs> call back from season one. Sure. Um, yes. And they'll always ask me what kind of dipping sauce so I'm like, I don't want any. And like they're like, really? I'm like. Yeah, I really you don't. Weirdo, want... what are you doing? Like it's <laughs> just fine the way it is. <laughs> funny. Yeah, I'm a I'm a condiment guy. I've I found um actually like healthy ketchup that doesn't have much sugar in it and is mm. just you know not. It's got like three ingredients in it or something. So um i've actually as i've become more health conscious i look at what the ingredients are and i'm like okay cool that's a condiment that i can feel all right about eating but i would be i'm a ranch guy so if um yeah. you know if uh, pizza with uh, pizza with ranch fries with ranch you know whatever so I, it's pure mayonnaise it's i i i don't do it so much anymore mm-hmm. um but yeah and and when i when i do i'm very p- particular about the ranch i but, remember when I waited tables after I graduated high school, I did a Denny's. Mm. And most of the dressings came in giant plastic tubs. Uh, but yeah, you, I don't need to know how that's made. Oh, no. but see, I don't, make, And I haven't eaten a Denny's in probably, you know, a good five, six years anyway. And but, nor should you. But mm-hmm. the ranch is made in store. Oh. And the ranch is pretty much giant. Like, it's... When I'd make it, it'd be like two giant tubs of mayonnaise, a whole lot of milk, and Hidden Valley Ranch. And just <laughs> and some spices and, and stir. Yeah, and just stirring it together. And it would just be the, it would take forever because oh, yeah, at the time I had no arm strength. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're, you'd be happy if you never saw Ranch ever again. I would, yeah, I think, I think um, food service also. I've My heard years this, of food service. this a lot from you know if you work in fast food you never mm-hmm. want to eat fast food again yeah. and but yeah I I do like I like the animal style fries from In and Out I yeah. like the cheese fries from the Shake Shack um, which clearly I eat them very sparingly otherwise I would be if I ate them as often as I wanted to eat them I would be huge judged by your lanky frame ah uh, uh, well sir flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> 
as you can <laughs> see, my years of food service. Have... Yeah. As it's put in being John Malkovich, uh, flattery will get you everywhere, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so anyway, so yeah, Super Bowl wasn't so bad, and uh, now we're going to the good transition. Yeah, no, the good segue. The good segue. See what I did there? Yeah, see what, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Nature has are destroying the neighborhood. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, robot slave lady, <laughs> busty Alexa. That's. Oh, Janet. Hey there. I had I had that <laughs> marked down. I love Buck, busty Alexa. <laughs> I think I had that too. Was... Yeah. Busty Alexa. It's perfect. Yeah. Still not used to it. Uh, hey, what if I, an already amazing person who definitely <laughs> belongs here, wanted to learn even more about how to be a good person? Is one of these nerds like a teacher or a life coach or an Instagram fitness model or something? <laughs> Eleanor, I'd like you to meet Chidi Anagonye. Chidi, this is Eleanor. Janet tells me you were a professor of some kind? Yes, I was a professor of ethics and moral philosophy, focusing on deontology. Hang on one second, Chibi. <laughs> this guy's too big of a nerd. Who else you got? Michael, what do we do here? I, I love know. the obelisk. I know. <laughs> that place knows that one of you actually belongs down there with them, and they want that person to get inside the obelisk, or they're going to take all of you. I can't go. I'm too young to die and too old to eat off the kids, and then you... What a <laughs> stupid age I am. <laughs> I don't survive down there. They should take Eleanor. She's a pear shape. She'd fit right in. Oh, excuse me. You wish you could have a bite of this pear. I'll go. I deserve to go. You guys can stay. You're oh, not. Yes. No, I have to go. Well, 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 then that's exactly why oh. should we do it. Oh. Oh. Holy forking shirt. You guys, don't you get it? Michael is torturing us. <laughs> That's why our lives have been so miserable since the moment we got here. This isn't the good place. It's the bad place. Ah, <laughs> oh, farts. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, Jason's line of I'm too young to die and too old to eat off the kids menu. What a stupid age I am. <laughs> I, they, they, you know, again, Jason is a great character, but they made him particularly dumb in this yes, episode. They, <laughs> they, they took Jason and turned him up to 11 is what they did. Um, but it's a great cold open. I think, I, and I wrote down here, this is probably the best opener they've ever had so far. Yeah, yeah. They get to have some fun with it. And it's it's sort of the, this felt like what the season opener kind of should have been. Right. Know? Well, I was thinking too, at some point, like how many times they had to, I know you've never seen Lost, but they had to like an alias. But it's sort of like whenever they realized that, I felt like whenever the network realized, oh, we could have more viewers, but they're already two seasons behind on this. Yeah. And this very, very deep and Easter egg rich story. And Netflix hasn't been invented online yet. So mm-hmm. maybe we should rejigger things. And that's sort of like what they kind of did with the season opener. And now they're just forking with it. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, Okay, we got that out of the way for the newcomers. Now let's have some, now let's have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> let's bring in Oberlisk because <laughs> why not? <laughs> that was great. I wanted, I wanted to see that whole, that whole reality. I wonder what the symbols meant. Um, I bet that there's something online <clears throat> that uh, that explores it. That's my guess, anyway. <clears throat> okay. So that's, I mean, he's a little hokey, oops. but he's... So there's um, that three minutes and 50 seconds I wanted to talk about something. But I'm also curious now. So talk about something while I look yeah. at the obelisk well, the, from The Good Place. So the other thing is, too, so um, uh, the thing I had written down is that it seems like J- Janet is the one who brings them together every time. Y- yes. Well, at least you know because it's it's still I think it's still Eleanor, but she but um but it's uh Janet that pairs them mm-hmm. up. You know, it, it's it's Eleanor that asks the questions and then Janet that kind of brings them in together. Yeah. So it's like the the two of them together. It's almost like what's interesting I think is um 
that 